Okay, so we have uh, Muhammad Hafiz uh, here. Okay, Assalamu alaikum and good afternoon. Um, uh, I want to ask something. Uh, yes. I'm not fine 
uh, your I cannot find your your page in uh, your notes in uh, columns. Yeah. So uh, can you go to my courses and see if you can see this uh, dashboard and can you check if this course is uh, visible to you? Is it available? Please uh, check. Uh, I, I'll check now. Mm. This morning I check. Uh, there's not, a... not available, right? Yeah, I also was very uh, confused. So I asked the admin to check <clears throat> and uh, they say, OK, they solved the problem already. So please check. Yeah, I will check now. Okay. is now available. Okay, okay. Just me. so please check if uh, anything is missing in the page. So on Kalam, I uploaded the slides for uh, uh, CO number one and CO number two, which is basically part one of your course. Course uh, part one. Okay. Uh, so you can see uh, the slides from introduction to advanced manufacturing, machining, casting, forming, joining, laser material processing and laser material processing part two. Please have a look. OK, yeah, it has all the content. Already have, OK. I am now uploading the video of the last lecture. Uh, last time we missed the lecture, right? Uh, I was teaching alone, <laughs> so this one I. Last week video. Yeah, video. Uh, it was machining. Part two. So both uh, both the video should be available now in few minutes. Uh, just processing now, okay. Uh, <clears throat> what else? Uh, yeah. So today I want to finish uh, advanced machining process. I think we will not uh, go through casting process this semester. Uh, edit. Advanced casting is not required this semester. OK, so I will just remove this. We proceed to forming directly. So machining, forming, joining and laser material processing. OK. <clears throat> OK. So how are you, Mr. Hafiz? Uh, preparing for Ramadan already? Uh, I'm fine and just uh, wait the day for Ramadan. Ramadan. Actually, uh, I just uh, my family, uh, my family just finished the quarantine. My uh, wife and kids, uh, the, the youngest, positive. Were positive last week. Okay. Yeah, so over a week, yeah, we we uh, just quarantine Me meeting after fourteen days, fourteen days quarantine. Of uh, uh, seven, seven days. Seven days. Actually, actually uh, for fourteen days. First, my youngest uh, son, mm -hmm. and my <laughs> and then after seven days. My wife. Okay. Continue. Okay. 
<laughs> I see. Unfortunate. Fourteen days. Okay. So last time we uh, cover until uh, basically when you were with me, then we cover until uh, around jet machining something. Then later on uh, I was teaching alone, so I some I, I cover until advanced abrasive uh, jet cutting. Uh, so this both videos uh, I have uploaded already. So today our task is to complete uh, electric discharge machining. Uh, then our task is to complete laser and electron beam machining. OK. So once we finish these three uh, topics, then actually our machining uh, chapter number one machining will be finished. So we have to finish machining chapter. OK. So I believe you can see correctly or not. Yeah, you can see correctly. OK. Uh, I gave you the Turnitin ID not yet, right? I have to give you guys Turnitin ID also for submission of assignment number one. But I gave briefing or not yet? Briefing also not, right? Uh, not yet. Okay, so so you have to make an account on Turnitin, a free. I'm not sure. Do you have access to Turnitin account? Uh, last time. Uh... Dr. Dying. Oh, yes. Okay. So okay. I said my, use my email. And now uh, we just got a new email from uh, UMP. Uh -huh. They use, they use uh, uh, metric number. My yes. metric number. Uh, okay. So you can use either my personal gym email, personal email, oh. or hmm. UMP. OK, so I am making a new Turnitin ID. Uh, subject engineering, uh, postgraduate. Uh, class will end. So our course will end by June. So something like, uh, let me use. First July, <coughs> OK. I have to submit this to you guys, the password. Uh, so I'm only six one three four subtract two. This is the <coughs> uh, when you are going to log in basically, Tanatin is going to ask you this class ID three four one zero nine three seven nine three six seven and one two three four is the uh, password. So I have already put pasted this in our group. So let me put the description also. Turn it in. Turn T R N I T N. Turn it in for class ID is three four. Class ID equals to this and enrollment key one two three four. Two three four. Okay. For assignment number one, uh, test one and test number two. Okay. So I put this in the group description also. <clears throat> uh, so now I have to make MME six one three four assignment. Assignment title is MME 6134. Point value doesn't matter. Post date is 20 March 29. Due date is 30 June. Optional settings, no need submit. Okay, so this is MME 6134. Another one is paper assignment 
next this my internet working no problem assignment title is thesis we need to submit the internet in for yes kalam correct uh, so you have to submit the let me let me tell you just a second uh, so april may june 30 post date is march 30 due date is 30 june and starting tomorrow summit okay okay so now you can see uh, these things right uh, mme 6134 so what is going to happen is that let's say uh, you can see here assessment assessment 100 percent marks 100 percent marks okay then you've got assignment number one which is equals to 20 percent marks test number one is equals to 30 percent marks and then this one also is 30 percent marks and then for presentation is 20 percent marks okay so what is going to happen is that in assignment number one i'm going to give you an assignment okay let's say i edit the setting of the assignment and i write here uh, students are required to submit two files uh, can you see clearly or should i zoom zoom in uh, is it clear is clear. clear okay so students are required to submit two files uh, for assignment also for test also okay what are the two files uh, file number one is uh, your MS Word uh, assignment uh, report file and number two uh, file number two is your uh, turn it in similarity report turn it in similarity report uh, so these are the two files you have to submit together now for turn it in similarity report turn it in similarity report I can allow 25% for assignment. Assignments. And. Uh, 20% for. Test number one and test number two. And. Do you know what is similarity report? Uh, yes, okay. similarity. Oh, okay, so so you can download. You know how to download. Uh, how about the internet or other sources? Uh, yeah, yeah, allowed. So, so so sources allowed. Sources allowed are so web websites, books, journals, internet, web pages, periodicals, etc. How many percent uh, for sources? Uh, yes, so this is now critical thing. This is now a critical thing. Not critical. Okay, yes, okay. correct, correct. This is very good point. How many sources should we have, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, how many percent the, for the sources? Uh, so 25 percent. 25 percent similarity. Can allowed. And for assignment and for test is 20 percent similarity. Okay. 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 So. Uh, after we check uh, turn it in, we need to download it and submit it in Kalam. Correct. Correct. Exactly. Correct. Exactly. So. So. So here you have uh, the option to submit 20 files and each file can be 20 MB. So you are free to upload uh, your Turnitin file, your uh, anything that you want to submit. No problem. Okay. Basically the biggest issue or the biggest problem or the biggest uh, what you call mistake or the biggest gap is searching the literature 
on Google Scholar or any source, basically searching the literature and then trying to cite it systematically in our uh, assignment or in our uh, test number one and two. That is the biggest challenge basically. Uh, basically what happens, let's say uh, in the last class we searched about ultrasonic machine, right? So if I'm going to give you a note that please give your comments on how to uh, how to do advanced uh, additive manufacturing of let's say uh, gear. OK, so you will write here additive. Manufacturing of gears. OK, so when you are going to write additive manufacturing of gears, you will get a lot of uh, journal papers, right? So let's say I open some of the journal papers. Uh, I think the best is elsewhere. So, atom manufacturing uh, biomedical. Okay. <clears throat> so, so let me open two or three papers. Okay. So now I have a collection of papers. Okay. Here we have got. Paper number one, paper number two, paper number three, paper number four, paper number five. Now the biggest challenge is that I am going to ask a question. Okay, in the previous years also I asked a question. Okay, uh, based on the different additive manufacturing techniques, please uh, please give your input or select a process suitable for biomedical uh, implant applications. Biomedical implant implant applications. Which also involve dynamic uh, or a machine motions okay something like that this is a question that i have asked okay this question for test number two will be uh, let's say 15 marks okay test number one and test number two so test number one test number one you have got uh, two questions question number one 15 marks and then we have got question number two. <coughs> 15 marks, so total 30 marks, right? So when we are going to give you an exam and you will have uh, a question, you will have about four hours to solve this question. Now, as you can see that this is a generalized question, okay, which means that there is no definite answer. There is no definite answer because this is a generalized question. It means that we are only looking forward to see the thought process of how you are going to search the literature and using the literature available, how you are going to address what is given in the question. <laughs> that is the most important thing. So there is no definite answer. It, it is kind of a short report, report or essay type question. So here what you will do is basically here you are going to to review you are going to review review the literature okay get information about process okay give notes about parameters Okay, give any special information that you want to add with the aid of figures and tables. Okay, 
and then uh, you are going to do a conclude conclusion or concluding remarks okay this is this is what we expect that how this is how you should answer the question you have 4 hours so you can spend 2 hours in each section you can spend 2 hours in each section in question okay <clears throat> It means that uh, you should know or you should understand the terminologies and keywords that are important that you should put in the Google Scholar. So the keyword number one is additive manufacturing, keyword number two is biomedical implant. Okay, so you will go here, you will go to Google Scholar, okay, and then you will search additive manufacturing and biomedical implant okay so oops sorry implant additive manufacturing and biomedical implant so when you search this you can see that a lot of work is available a lot of uh, journal articles are available uh, that we can uh, search on I can also restrict you for only for uh, steel applications, okay, or for steel material. So then again, you have to go here and write steel. Okay, so this is your keyword search and steel. So you can copy this in the answer and you can say uh, literature search methodology Okay, and then you can write the keywords used in this uh, literature search were this and this. Okay, so that I have the idea that which keywords you have used for searching the literature. So for instance, you have a uh, search about paper number one. So I closed the previous papers. Paper number one, then 2021, you search for uh, paper number two. <coughs> paper number Paper number four and paper number five. Okay, so you have obtained five papers. Uh, may I ask? Uh, uh, maximum five papers, or you can go beyond that. Yeah, no okay. problem. No problem. So, uh, uh, do you know how to use Mendeley software? Mendeley, this one? Uh, not. No, I okay. Know, not, I know. Okay. I, I can use, but not, not a pro. Oh, okay. No problem. <laughs> no, no problem. So, what I suggest Still you. Learning. Still learning, yeah. So I am also learning, but uh, uh, can you download it now, Mendeley? Uh, I, I have uh, downloaded it. When, already, already have okay. So we, if you, uh, if you in already class, in okay. class research methodology. Okay, nice. So let me open my Mendeley. Okay. The reason why I am telling you this is because uh, in the last uh, examination and the examination before that, a lot of students made the mistake actually of not citing the references or citing incorrect reference. So this is a mistake that they make, OK? So that is why I want to inform you that uh, we can basically uh, prevent this by installing Mendeley, OK? So in Mendeley, have you uh, installed this uh, web imp importer already? Uh, let me check. Yeah. So if you already have installed the web importer, then you can see this Mendeley uh, icon on your Google Chrome uh, toolbar. 
actually. <clears throat> Uh, can you open your Mendeley? Yeah. Toolbar. Install. Uh, the install. We need to install it. Yeah. yeah. Mendeley Web Importer. Uh, okay. Uh, install. And then this one also. Uh, Mr. Mendeley or oh, former case of word. Okay. Mm. These two things. But I not have uh, oh I have done, I have done. We started um, MS Word. Okay, already have, right? Fantastic. Okay. So now you just click this toolbar on your Google Chrome and Mendeley will automatically uh, fetch the article information so let me see if medley can do it now or not let's have a look so stuck already ah can okay. okay so medley uh medley has the uh what you call uh, already selected this reference so I need to select this add to Mendeley. So I will click add to Mendeley. And it will come inside my software automatically. So it is now adding in my Mendeley software. OK, so it has now added the file. And we can see that the uh, reference is now available on my Mendeley software. So we can also download the file also. So it is trying to download the file, no problem. So similarly, in the same manner, okay, I will also. I will also add this uh, these two articles. OK, so I go to Mendeley. And then I do add to Mendeley also. Can you uh, do this also? I'm uh, trying to okay. search this button. Uh, I'm uh, still downloading. Oh, still. <laughs> So, so uh, it's very easy. Just we uh, add to Mendeley. Okay. Add to Mendeley. The, this one also. Add to Mendeley. This one also. Add to Mendeley. If you cannot add to Mendeley, there is another way also. You copy this search in Google Scholar. <clears throat> then select site, then select refman, R-E-F-M-A-N, refman. So select this refman, then open this file, and it will be added to the Mendeley Reference Manager. OK, so all my articles are now available. And their PDF is also now available. <clears throat> okay, 
So now the question was basically that how to write the answer the correct way. So uh, once uh, you have uh, gone through the paper, once you have gone through the paper, okay, let's say you have written some text, okay, the answer. Okay, so you've started writing in your own words. What happened is that student make the mistake, they open the paper. Okay, let's say you want to copy something, you can copy no problem. But what you have to do is, you have to write all of this in your own words actually okay otherwise turnitin is going to detect the similarity so uh, so it is telling us about uh, biodegradable implants are highly appealing for minimal invasive treatments so you can say that the applications of um, bio uh, implants uh, are uh, uh, are now increasing uh, as they are minimally invasive. Okay, so this is something that you've written in your own words. After you've written in your own words, it is important to cite that from where this paragraph was taken. So I go back, okay. I go back to Mendeley and I see that this paragraph was written by these authors. This paragraph was written by these authors. It is very important. So I have to go back to my assignment or my test and I have to add the reference of those authors. Okay. So I will go, I will insert a reference. In the reference, I can see Mendeley on the corner. I select Mendeley. Then I will select my author. Oops. So I need to log in. So this paper is from uh, Anna Karevik. Anna Kalevik. So I have to select Anna Kalevik. Here I can see the authors. Okay, so I select this Anna Kalevik. I place my cursor here. Okay, wait here. And then I insert one citation. So I can insert my citation here. Okay, and work elevate like this. Okay, so this has been added. Okay. Then I need another sentence. So this was also proven by, let's say this author. So I insert his citation. Okay. So this is how we are have to add citations in our assignments. Now you can see that these citations involve the author names. Okay. So this is called American Psychological Association APA style. This is called APA style of referencing. Okay. You can convert this to number format also. How? You go to citation style here. In the citation style, select. I think Harvard. No. Vancouver. OK, so when you select Vancouver, then the number style has appeared. OK. Uh, so there are different styles that you can select. So you can add additional styles by searching on the internet also. 
So this is called referencing uh, proper referencing. OK, now once you have finished your essay, you have completed everything. OK, then you want to add figure also. OK, very important thing is you have to add figure. So the best way to add a figure is that you download it directly. So download high resolution image. You download the high resolution image here. OK, then you copy the image. You put it here. OK, you copy and put it here. And then. Uh, you have to give reference to the figure also. That's the most important thing. So this figure is about atomic force micrography. Uh, topography. Graphical image. Of sample. Sample prepared by editor manufacturing OK. Now you have to add reference here. So this paper was. From. Uh, Sunya Devi OK, Sun so young. So I go here, I references, I add. Suryang Suryang Devadeti. OK, so here is Suryang Devadeti. Select and insert citation. So now I have a very properly formatted text, properly formatted figure. So figure number one. And you have to write figure number one here as well, as per by uh, two in figure one. OK, so this is proper way of basically uh, writing an essay or writing a report for assignment in test number one. Can we uh, can I just uh, after the figure title? I I write uh, sources from sources. Uh, from yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, so that is called bibliography. bibliography. So now you fi you finish your essay already, right? So you have written the essay already. Now you want to cite all your sources, right? You want to make a list of all the references, right? So no, no, I mean, uh, no, I mean, uh, under the image, mm -hmm. figure, I, I write uh, sources uh, from where? Ah, OK, OK, yeah. So so basically there are two ways. There are two ways of basically putting the uh, reference OK. One is you put the source source OK and uh, the name of the authors and everything and, and another way is you put only this reference number also can oh, okay. also you can you can write another thing which is uh, re, re or uh, taken or uh, reprinted with permission from elsewhere. Uh, with uh, uh, you know uh, license something like that. This is something uh, very advanced, but but you can get a license actual license also for this figure to use. How you can get the license? You go to this article, OK? And you see this is the figure number one, OK? So here on the corner on the top, you can see gets rights and contents. <coughs> So you can get the official rights to publish or to use this figure in your article. So you select select rights and content. <coughs> okay. What do you want to do? I want to reuse this material in my uh, thesis or report. OK, I want to reuse it in my thesis. What do you want to re reuse? I want to reuse the figure. OK, which figure number? My figure number is one. What is the, my format? This format is print. I am the author of this article. No. I will be translating. No. My currency is United States dollar. Yes. And then you go to continue. 
so it will give you an account and it will tell you how much money you need to pay or if it is free of cost then it will provide you a license number their license number uh, yeah so later on i will let you know their license number you have to put here it to one you know uh, yeah, some some type of number so this is also possible but this is something very advanced and inshallah you can go through this later on when you are going to start your journey of phd okay i'm not i'm not learning in this uh, method from <coughs> research methodology <laughs> subject yeah uh, every, everybody has different uh, knowledge and i i cannot say anything uh, everybody say has different uh, speciality added value every human is different here yeah. so uh, i mean uh, we check uh, we are checking the student paper systematically that okay student should have this student should have that but then we should also tell them step by step that how your report how your assignment should look like right yeah. this is very important and then after this after you have finished your essay or your report or your answer then you have to add the bibliography so you go to this uh, mendeley okay so i will close this i will go back again mendeley site after mendeley site you go to more more than you go to insert bibliography so you insert bibliography your bibliography will be inserted at your cursor location so i want to insert bibliography in my next page so i will put my cursor here okay but i want to put uh, bibliography bibliography this one i delete okay and now continue so you see the list of all the reference they are now available for your assignment okay so this is how uh, this is easy way easy way very easy way so it's not very difficult actually yeah is have a lot yeah <laughs> have a lot so so uh, Uh, this is what we are looking for when you are going to write your test number one as test number two, test number two and assignment number one. <clears throat> okay, this is important. So the uh, date uh, for Simon and Simon. so so we can discuss between ourselves when we both are comfortable when you guys are also comfortable so then we can decide uh, basically uh, a comfortable date for oh. our test and assignment yeah. yeah so maybe uh so let us open oh. the calendar actually yeah you are good we should plan this also so let us open our calendar so uh we are in march 28th march 28th march week number 3 4 5 6 7 hmm so we must have our assignment um and test before hari raya or one assignment during one assignment before hari raya and one test after hari raya something like that but assignment is confirmed before hari raya oh, okay assignment is confirmed before hari raya uh, test i cannot sure i am not sure about test but uh, yeah assignment is uh, hari raya correct so i save this to desktop uh how to cite papers in your test and assignment save the file <coughs> 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 
basically the biggest thing or the biggest challenge is that we have a topic let's say electron beam machining and our challenge is to quickly open the relevant literature then scan it from our eyes very quickly get the relevant data and uh, information about parameters and uh, conclusive statements from the uh, paper and then paste it quickly in our assignment and test this is the challenge actually so in this type of in, in this type of uh, uh, advanced manufacturing master course you don't have to memorize a lot of things you don't have to uh, what you call uh, learn things you just have to go through the lecture online okay so that these keywords electron beam machining ultrasonic machining when you search with me uh, during the class then it will automatically be inserted in your mind and in your unconscious mind these terms are embedded in your system and once we start searching the literature review about each of these these topics then what is going to happen is that uh, uh, those parameters you will start to become familiarized with those things actually later on when you are going to search for your main literature review uh, for your main research then it will be very very easy so uh, the concept of or, or or our goal is that we have a list of topics so using those list of topics how deep further we can go by opening the research papers this is our target okay <clears throat> so uh, let me check uh, if the advanced machining is available now on kalam and youtube so my previous lecture is now available so you can access okay yeah so and you miss the water jet machining so this one is also accessible to you okay so both videos are available now so that's it uh, uh, for uh, uh, introduction to using reference management software which is mendeley so let us get back to our lecture okay we have to finish our topics uh, so let me <clears throat> okay so let us start with electrical discharge machining uh, which is another type of uh, advanced uh, manufacturing technology uh, which is a bit different from a conventional uh, milling machine in that it uses electrical discharge and small small explosions to basically quickly remove uh, material or chunks of material so in electrical discharge machining the work material is removed by a series of sparks that cause localized melting and evaporation so basically this word uh, localized local is very very important there is one thing called local and there is another thing called global these are two very very big and important uh, what i call terms when i am going to machine a steel surface and i say that i want to machine the whole steel surface then machining the whole steel surface is called global however if i want to machine only a small part or a small portion of this steel surface or this steel block then my definition becomes local okay local means that we concentrate our efforts on very effective very small effective area
this is our target. So that is why it is written here. Uh, sorry, I am receiving a call. Just a second, uh, something come up. Okay, so I will resume the lecture. Okay, uh, so I was talking about localized. Uh, the term localized and localized has a very, very important me uh, meaning in our uh, advanced manufacturing process. So basically when we are targeting localized area, which is a very small area. Okay. And we bombard that localized area with sparks. Okay. With significant amount of sparks. Then it causes some types of explosions, small explosions. And these explosion basically create uh, pressure waves okay pressure waves and those pressure waves causes the removal of material material so we are going to visualize this electric discharge machining process in the video now uh, <coughs> the two main processes of electric discharge machining are uh, edm and wire electrical discharge machining, okay? Which means that the process, process is same, okay? EDM and wire EDM. Only the tool shape has changed or tool type has changed okay these process can be used on electrically conducting work material so there is a limitation the limitation is conductive only okay so let's look at a video together okay so i open the as erosion continues, the machine controls advance the electrode through the work, always maintaining a constant gap distance between it and the workpiece. So it is saying this is an electric discharge machining process, and we have got the workpiece, okay, WP, and then we have got uh, the tool, which is in this case, they are saying it is electrode. And it is constantly maintaining certain amount of small gap. This gap is important because discharge is produced between the gap. Okay, we are going to supply it with current and voltage. So that electrical discharge occurs. To understand how EDM removes metal, let's examine a single spark in the erosion process. As a pulse of DC electricity reaches the electrode and part, an intense electrical field develops in the gap. 
So it is saying that when we are going to zoom into this process, okay, it is saying that we have got the tool and the workpiece. Between the tool and workpiece, we have got insulation or dielectric dielectric fluid. You can see in the figure also or in the video also that we have got some amount of liquid. Always. Here. This liquid or the function of this liquid is basically to act as a insulating medium, insulation medium between the electrode and the workpiece. So how is the electricity generating magnetic field? It is because of the distance between some dielectric and that dielectric produces a magnetic field. Then what happens? Let's see. Maintaining between it to under. Let's examine the process. As a pulse of DC electricity reaches the electrode and part, an intense electrical field develops in the gap. Microscopic contaminants suspended in the dielectric fluid are attracted by the field and concentrate at the field's strongest point. These contaminants build a high conductivity bridge across the gap. As the field's voltage increases, this material in the conductive bridge heats up. Some pieces ionize to form a spark channel between the electrode and the workpiece. At this point, both the temperature and pressure in the channel rapidly increase, generating a spark. A small amount of material melts and vaporizes from the electrode and workpiece at the points of spark contact. A bubble composed of the gaseous byproducts of vaporization rapidly expands outward from the spark channel. Once the pulse ends, the spark and heating action stop, collapsing the spark channel. Dielectric fluid rushes into the gap, flushing molten material from both surfaces. This EDM residue consists of small solidified balls of material and gas bubbles. Okay, so uh, the process is such that uh, we have got this dielectric fluid and it has got some uh, particles which wants to become uh, localized in the region between volt where voltage is applied. Okay, so these particles, okay, because there is very high voltage or pulse voltage which is applied, these particles want to basically conduct electricity. Okay, electrons move in one direction and ions move in another direction. So when they want to conduct electricity, they want to become charged. When they want to become charged, then the atomic uh, energy increases. When the atomic energy increases, they want to basically dissociate atom into an ion and electron. This is an ion. So that the ion goes upwards and electron goes towards the uh, other terminal. Okay. So when there is a dissociation of atom into electron and ion, okay, dissociation occurs. Then spark or plasma matter, plasma is produced. Plasma is very high amount of energy, okay, that high amount of energy, this energy, okay, produces high velocity, high pressure, which causes an erosion or implosion on the material. Temperature also increases, okay, and uh, uh, material melts. and it gets removed away by dielectric. So this dielectric fluid basically, okay, it is pumped in and pumped out. Pumped in and out after the machining process to make it clean, okay? And the function of dielectric fluid is also to cool down, cool down the uh, workpiece and tool. So it has different functions. 
So electric discharge machining is one of the most widely used uh, non-traditional process. An ADM setup and a close-up view of the gap between the tool and the workpiece are illustrated. So here we have got the tool. The tool moves. As the tool moves, the material is also removed. Uh, we have got electrode, uh, the workpiece. We have got the dielectric gap. We have got the dielectric fluid coming in and coming out. Sparks are produced. Temperature increases and localized melting occurs. The setup of electric discharge machining process and close-up view gap are shown here as well. So this is the same close-up which we have just seen in the video. The electric discharge machining process must take place in the presence of a dielectric fluid which creates a path for each discharge as the fluid becomes ionized in the gap. The fluid usually kerosene oil uh, is used to carry away the debris. Sparks occur across a small gap between the tool and the workpiece. The discharge are generated by a pulsating direct current power supply. So we have or we need to use DC supply, okay, which has pulsating characteristics. Pulse characteristics, which means that the output is basically in the form of pulses. Something like that. Electrode materials are high temperature but easy to machine, thus allow ease manufacturing of complex shapes. Typical electrode materials include copper, tungsten, and graphite. So the electrode material are copper, tungsten, and uh, graphite or carbon. <clears throat> the process is based on melting temperature, not hardness. So some very hard materials can be machined this way. Okay. Uh, now let's move on to wire electric discharge machining. So as I told you, the difference between EDM and WEDM is that the EDM has a big tool, uh, which has the shape of what we want to machine. Whereas for wire electric discharge machining, we have got wires and these wire basically creates a very, very fine cut. We can create a very, very fine cut with the help of wires. We can slice a material in, in micrometers basically. So the biggest uh, advantage of electric discharge machining is we can create extremely fine surface. So this is something that we will look into the video. So let's have a look at the video as well. हेलो एवरीवन माय नेम इज विवेक चौधरी एंड अभी आप जो वर्क पीस देख रहे हैं सो दिस वर्क पीस इज मेड बाय अ वायर ईडीएम मशीन दिस इज कट प्रीसाइसली बाय इन दिस वीडियो वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट ईडीएम एंड स्पेशली वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट वायर ईडीएम ईडीएम मींस इलेक्ट्रिकल डिस्चार्ज मशीनिंग और स्पार्क मशीनिंग और स्पार्क इरोडिंग और डाइसिंग मतलब हम इसको बहुत सारे नेम से बोलते हैं EDM is a metal fabrication process जिसकी हेल्प से हम किसी भी वर्क पीस को कट कर सकते हैं into its shape and उसमें हमें इस वन ऑपरेशन में दबा देना भी बोलते हैं so पीस को कट कर सकते हैं हमारे वर्क पीस हमारे वर्क पीस को close up view जो कि हमारे वर्क पीस को cool down भी रखता है and further जो heat इसके अंदर produce रखता है हमारे वर्क पीस के अंदर so this is the wire यूज करते हैं वायर ईडीएम इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट सिंपल कटिंग प्रोसेस ये बहुत ही सिंपल कटिंग प्रोसेस है जहाँ पे हम एक इलेक्ट्रिक डिस्चार्ज का यूज कर रहे हैं फॉर कटिंग द वर्क पीस एंड साथ में हम एक डाइलेक्ट्रिक फ्लूड का यूज करते हैं पास होता है सो so, so, इसका यूज so, हम प्रोटोटाइप प्रोडक्शन में करते हैं फॉर ऑटोमोबाइल एरो के थ्रू जो है कटिंग और इसके अंदर कोई डायरेक्ट कॉन्टेक्ट नहीं होता बिटवीन टूल एंड वर्क पीस क्योंकि जो हम प्रोसेस यूज कर रहे हैं वो एक डाइलेक्ट्रिक डिस्चार्ज है सो डिस्चार्ज के अंदर कोई टूल को डैमेज होने से ये बचाता है बहुत ही प्रिसाइज कटिंग करता है 
इट एक्स इज कूलेंट डायरेक्ट कांटेक्ट नहीं होता बिटवीन टूल एंड वर्कपीस एंड देन इट फ्लशेस अवे द मटेरियल व्हिच इज प्रोड्यूस्ड ड्यूरिंग द मेल्टिंग प्रोसेस डिस्चार्ज के अंदर टाइल पर कटिंग इससे हम कर सकते हैं सो इसके काफी सारे एडवांटेजेस और ओवरकट भी फॉर्म होता है मतलब ये कभी-कभी जो है गलत कटिंग भी कर देता है अगर आप इसको कोशियसली यूज नहीं कर रहे हैं तो ये प्रॉब्लम भी इसके अंदर आती है एंड वन ऑफ द बिग प्रॉब्लम इज कि हम इससे शार्प कॉर्नर अटेन करने में हमें सो दिस वाज ऑल अबाउट इलेक्ट्रिक डिस्चार्ज मशीन so it looks like my computer has hanged <laughs> okay powerpoint crash okay no problem okay so i move on to advanced uh, machining electric discharge machining wire electric Hello. discharge machining okay so here you can see that the workpiece is fed continuously and slowly past the wire we have got a wire and in order to achieve the desired cut path numerical control is used so numerical control are basically a series of computerized codes and standards numerical control are a series of basically computerized uh, uh, codes g and m and codes they are used to give instructions instructions to machine to perform a operation operation to perform operation so like a, a code let's say uh, let's say you have got do tos uh, operating system right so you we used to write uh, cd dot dot cls gw basic cls okay something like that so these are instructions to carry out a operation similarly in the field of manufacturing we use g and n codes so as in electric discharge machining wire cutting uh, must be carried out in an electric dielectric fluid deionized water or oil this is applied by nozzles directed at the tool workpiece interface as in the figure or workpiece is submerged in the dielectric part the wire diameter yeah this is important electric discharge wire edm the wire diameter is equals to 0.08 to 0.30 mm now one millimeter is equals to 1000 micrometer so this is equals to 80 micrometer to 300 micrometer very very thin wire is used to basically create uh, a very fine surface finish cutting material use of wire include brass copper tungsten and molybdenum and uh, overcut range from 0.2 to 0.5 so is, uh, that means curve larger than the wire diameter 
so if you have a wire diameter okay then you will do little bit over cutting also because in this region sparks are produced so those sparks basically surrounding the wire cut additional material something like that the process is well suited for sheet metal working camps and so our uh, you know our persona which has came to pro engine something like that so the camshaft in persona is made by perhaps electric discharge wire cutting so this was all about uh, electric discharge machining okay next uh, i will take a break for about 20 minutes okay and then we are going to move on to laser beam machining laser beam and electron beam machining okay mr hafiz so i will see you guys in uh, 20 minutes is it okay here okay Okay thank you i will see you in 20 minutes
Okay, Mr. Hafiz, so I will resume the lecture now. <clears throat> okay, uh, so we move on to laser beam machining, uh, which involves uh, the usage of lasers technology or photon based manufacturing technology. Photon based. Manufacturing technology. So what are laser or what is laser? So laser is. Light. Amplification. By stimulated. emission of radiation. So basically, uh, as the word shows and as you can see in the figure, we basically stimulate a medium and when we stimulate a medium emission occur and that emission basically is uh, a form of radiation which is also a part of light and that light is basically monochromatic. And coherent. Which means that it forms and it moves in straight path or straight line. It does not uh, diffuse outwards. OK. So in lasers, we have got uh, a, a medium. That medium okay, can be uh, different type of specialized crystals. So we have got different mediums. Such as neobidium, yatium, uh, aluminium garnet, YAG. Okay, or we've got yatribium, YB. Okay. We have got uh, diode. Okay, something like that. So we have got different types of or we can also have carbon dioxide gas CO2. So we have got different types of medium. Okay, and diff these different types of uh, mediums, they need to be stimulated. I need to basically stimulate the atoms. In order to stimulate the atoms, I need to basically provide energy. Okay, this is my mediums. These mediums need to be stimulated with the help of energy. So in this diagram, flash lamp is basically Flash lamp is basically a source which is basically used to stimulate the medium. And when we stimulate the medium, then radiation exits, then radiation exits. So after stimulation, coherent radiation exits. OK, now this radiation is basically uh, uh, energy or splash of uh, photons. OK, so these photons are emitted. In a very narrow and straight path. OK, now we can direct these photons by putting them in front of a mirror. Highly reflective mirror, so I can control. The direction of these photons by controlling the direction of mirror and hence the direction of machining. So if I want to machine this part and if I want to move my laser beam, which is coming here from this direction to this direction, then I will just change the angle of this mirror. By some degrees quickly by attaching this mirror to a stepper motor. OK, stepper or servo, I think stepper motor. Step motor. 
and by controlling the angle of this mirror i can move my laser beam from one direction to another direction <coughs> so basically uh, this is the function of uh, uh, this is how a laser works now another thing which i forgot to mention is that laser is basically in the form of a series of rays or radiation and we need to compact them or combine them or we need to narrow them down so we use a lens because laser is light light means we can control the direction of lens and we can uh, direct it very very narrow okay so once again what happens is that we have got this work piece this is work piece and i want to basically machine a very narrow or narrow region narrow means local local region so i have got my lens from that lens i am going to combine a stream of laser beam and then i am going to combine them onto the local region so when they combine then they produce very high amount of high amount of local localized energy okay so this is called uh, laser beam machining or this is the process and when this high amount of laser energy strikes the material then it melts vaporizes and hence the result in material removal mr so uh, let's take a look at process okay with the help of lasers we can perform with the help of lasers we can create holes and creating holes means drilling we can remove large amount of material so which means machining or milling we can even do laser turning we can do polishing okay we can create texture so we can do texturing we can create colors on a surface okay so this is called coloring so there we can do welding of materials we can do brazing of materials so there are a lot of secondary operations or there are a lot of associated laser operations that we can do because of the advantage that laser has highly localized energy that can be produced so here is an example of micro hole drilling in nickel alloy okay so this is a nickel plate by millimeter laser drilling assisted with water treatment so in laser beam machining as i said different types of lasers are available we have different types of laser carbon dioxide laser gas laser diode laser and dr laser 
the light produced by the laser has significantly less power than the normal white light but it can be highly focused thus delivering a significantly higher intensity and concentrated energy in a very localized area the laser are being used for drilling slitting slotting and marking operations uh, most of the material types can be machine using laser beam machining process okay so now that we have gone through laser now the medium was uh, light and now we are going to switch on to another type which is electron beam machining which is also called ebm and here the medium is electrons electron beam machining and the medium is electrons which means that we have to uh, we have to use some uh, hot filament okay or cathode or hot filament to basically eject electrons outwards and use some type of some type of magnetic field to control the direction of electrons so here is a case electron beam machining uses a very high velocity stream of electron focused on the worky surface to remove the material by melting and vaporization a schematic process of the electron beam process is illustrated here now the biggest problem of electron beam is basically that we need to put a vacuum chamber so that we can create electrons electron cannot be created if vacuum chamber is not available which means that the size of the sample the size of the sample is limited by the vacuum chamber the size is limited by vacuum size of the vacuum chamber in electric discharge machining the limitation was that only electrically conductive material can be used in electron beam machining the size is limited because of the vacuum chamber so what happens is that we have got an electron beam gun in which we have got a burning or a very uh, ejection ejection based filament that filament uh, between that filament we apply very high voltage which causes electrons to eject from cathode towards anode <coughs> sorry then the electron beam is diverging so we use a magnetic lens to converge the electrons towards the workpiece so as the electron strikes the material it causes the uh, energy of the material of the atoms to increase which means it increases the kinetic energy when the kinetic energy increases then the inter collision occurs and inter collision increases inter collision of the atoms increases means they all trying to vibrate and then the temperature increases temperature increases then the atom uh, basically the atom uh, they overcome the bonding between material and then they are ejected so this is the process by which uh, electron beam uh, does a machining process so let's look at how this uh, process can be visualized so you can see we have got a, a chamber vacuum chamber vacuum pump should be connected this is the electron gun electron gun and this chamber is connected to a vacuum pump which removes the air from the uh, chamber then we have got our sample uh, holder that we are going to put inside the vacuum chamber then vacuum is used to remove the air from the vacuum chamber then the gun is going to strike electrons this is the i think magnetic uh, solenoid so cathode anode electron generated between cathode and anode and accelerated by electromagnetic field electron beam is created and then it goes through a lens which is electrically controlled the magnetic coil is a deflection coil to control the direction of the electron beam and this help us in basically welding the workpiece cutting the workpiece and other operations can be done drilling also can be done
now the weld produce have a very uh, strong weld and they are basically uh, perfect because if they are carried out in a vacuum chamber So electron beam guns generate a continuous stream of electrons that are focused through an electromagnetic lens. The electrons are accelerated with voltage of approximately 150,000 volts to create a velocity of over 200,000 km per second. The lens is capable of reducing the area of the beam to a diameter as small as 0 0.0 to 5 millimeter. So the diameter of the electron beam so the diameter of the electron beam is equals to 0 0.025 millimeter, which is equals to 1, 2, 3, 25 micrometer. <coughs> okay. <coughs> okay, so we have got another uh, video. Welcome to Academic Game Tutorials. In this video, we will look into the differences between electron beam machining and laser beam machining. So what In is the, the electron beam electron machining laser. process? A high velocity focused beam of electrons are used to remove the metal from the workpiece. This process is best suited for the micro cutting of materials. Laser beam machining is a form of machining that uses heat directed from a laser beam. This process uses thermal energy to remove material from metallic or non-metallic surfaces. So, let's look into the basic differences between electron beam machining and laser beam machining in a tabular form. Difference number one, in electron beam machining, a high intensity beam of focused electrons is used to supply heat for material removal, whereas, in laser beam machining, a high intensity beam of laser, coherent photons, is used to supply heat for material removal. Number 2. Electron beam machining process is always carried out in vacuum, very low pressure, chamber to avoid collision of electrons with their molecules. Such collision can undesirably reduce kinetic energy of electrons and spread them, whereas, laser beam machining does not require vacuum chamber. It can be carried out in open atmosphere. Sometimes shielding gas can be applied in machining zone to avoid high temperature oxidation of machined surface. Number 3. Electron beam machining is suitable for small components as workpiece is required to keep within the vacuum chamber, whereas, in laser beam machining, workpiece size does not pose any restriction as it can be carried out in open environment. Number 4. Electron beam machining process is time consuming mainly due to creating a low pressure vacuum chamber, whereas, laser beam machining process is time efficient. Number 5. X ray is generated during electron beam machining process. This possesses serious health concern to the operator, whereas, no X ray is generated in laser beam machining process. Number 6. Electron beam machining is applicable to electrically conductive workpiece mm. materials only as workpiece must be grounded to stay neutral by transmitting striking electrons to the ground, whereas, laser beam machining is independent of electrical conductivity of workpiece material. So it can be used for both conductive and non-conductive materials. And, difference number 7, optical properties of workpiece surface, such as reflectivity and absorptivity, don't influence electron beam machining process capability, whereas, laser beam machining process capability relies on the optical properties of workpiece surface. <clears throat> High reflectivity can severely affect process capability. Welcome to Ac So, uh, there is one very important um, problem of a laser that it depends on optical properties. If the surface of my material is reflective, then when the laser beam strikes the material, okay, it is reflected back. That's a huge problem. 
now different types of uh, material have different types of reflectivity okay so uh, laser beam reflectivity of different uh, what you call uh, metals uh, can be also uh, evaluated for example uh, i will i will show you a picture here in this diagram in figure number uh, a you can see the absorptivity absorptivity okay of different uh, materials with respect to the wavelength now as you know that light light has wavelength okay <clears throat> so absorptivity percentage and wavelength okay are related for each material so for copper you can see that we have got only about 30% then for uh, steel we have got about 60% at specific wavelength so if i am going to select nd yag laser okay niobium yttrium garnet then the wavelength of nd yag is 1064 uh micro uh, nanometer or 112.064 micrometer which is close to 1 okay so this is copper this is steel so if i am going to intersect the curve of copper and steel then i can see that steel has a higher absorptivity of about uh, 45% and copper has an absorptivity of about a uh, very low about 10% so if my laser i i i strike copper with 100 watt okay then because only 10% is absorbed it means that i am striking copper with only 10 watt because the remaining is reflected away that's the problem okay <clears throat> that is a big problem and if i am going to strike steel okay i have got steel with 100 watt of laser then what is going to happen is that 45% will be uh, 45% will be absorbed which means that steel will absorb forty-five watt and fifty-five watt is reflected away. So this is the problem with lasers. Okay. <coughs> so the relation of wavelength with absorptivity okay is very 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 important because different materials have different optical properties <clears throat> which means that machining steel with lasers is easier than machining copper <clears throat> okay so this is a very big factor Uh, so let's take a look at electron beam drilling process. The Steigerwald EB drilling technology offers economical advantages when processing workpieces requiring a large number of drilled holes. The high drilling frequency of up to 3000 holes per second, wear-free operation and the production of inclined holes are outstanding features of EB drilling. Typical areas of application are the drilling of spinning heads for fiberglass production or the manufacturing of all kinds of filter plates. 
at the EADS in Munich. Here, the propulsion units of the European satellite launch rockets are designed and produced with Steigerwald EB machines. The main focus here is the EB welding of bigger workpieces with extensive weld geometrics or processing areas. Electron beam technology enables the safe joining of varying and sometimes critical material combinations. Complex workpieces normally made expensively from one single component can be divided into several parts and welded together to a firm piece in a cost-efficient manner. The technology of Steigerwaldstrahl technique is found in many applications where it is necessary to have safe and secure welded joints. We take the original CAD file for the DARPA DMA sphere and we slice it into layers. We then stack these layers on top of each other in the Z direction and you see that thousands of layers together form spheres. We then take the file that we've created and input it into the RCAM A2 machine. Once the file is loaded, we actually go and place powder, in this case it's titanium, six aluminum, four vanadium powder, into the hopper created in the in this system. So this is uh, something separate. This is about electron beam uh, making additive manufacturing uh, actually so this was about laser and electron beam powerpoint is crashing Okay, so let's move on to the last topic of today's session, which is laser micro jet technology. So actually I taught uh, um, water jet machining in which we basically use water at very high pressure to create a machined surface. Okay, but if I'm going to apply and add together water with the laser beam together, then together they can produce extremely fast and extremely uh, high amount of machining can be produced. So the laser microjet machine is a hybrid method of machining. Hybrid means you combine two process. Hybrid means combine two processes. Okay. <clears throat> So it combines a laser with a hair thin water jet that precisely guides the laser beam by means of total internal reflection. So rather than using a lens and then basically transferring the laser to the uh, workpiece material, what I do is I have got the stream of water and within the stream of water, the laser basically internally reflects and then it strikes the material. So this is called water jet or laser micro jet, laser micro jet technology. The water jet continuously cools the cutting zone and efficiently removes the debris. So what happens is that when the high amount of heat is generated in the workpiece, then the water jet basically cools down this amount of heat also. And when the debris is generated, when the material is removed, so it helps out the water uh, or the water stream help out, helps out in removing the particles as well away from the 
workpiece. So basically it help us remove the particles away from the workpiece so that a fresh layer or a fresh piece or a fresh surface is available to strike the material. This is a very, very new technology. Okay. So, so uh, up rather than we have the focus for focusing lens also here, we have the lens also, but then that lens together with water is used. So laser beam focused by the lens, then we've got window in which we've got water at very high pressure entering and then it basically strikes the material in the form of laser guided total internal reflection. Okay. So this is a, a conventional laser beam, okay, in which we can see that uh, it is focused onto a small range and the working range is very, very small. Working range is basically the depth of field. This is very, very small because uh, the laser beam basically move, uh, the light basically travels like this optically. However, when we use water, then the laser continuously remains same and it moves in the same direction and the working range becomes very, very high. <laughs> So uh, when what are the parameters which are required? So we use diode pump solid state laser, NDR laser with a pulse duration of micro or nanosecond range operating at 1064 nanometer or 532 nanometer. The power is 20 to 400 watt. We need pure deionized and filter water and then water consumption is low because of a very small thin of laser beam. Very small thin uh, hair jet is basically used. Uh, the resulting force are also very negligible. The nozzle is made of sapphire or diamond as these materials hardness enable the generation of long stable water jet over a long period of time. The diameter of the nozzle is 20 to 100 micrometer. So I hope this video is going to work. Okay, so let's look at the last video and then we finish the lecture. Sonova's laser microjet, precise, efficient, disruptive. <clears throat> Conventional lasers have exhausted their ability to keep up with the ever-growing demand for quality. They no longer make the cut. Thermal damage, taper, contamination. The need for a better solution has become urgent. Sonova has reinvented laser technology and paved the way to new laser applications. Laser Microjet solves a number of issues causing imperfections in traditional cutting methods due to its unique technology which combines a water jet with light. That sounds impossible, but we've done it and it works. The laser beam is guided by the thinnest water jet thanks to total internal reflection resulting in perfectly parallel curve walls and tight cutting widths. This ingenious water jet guided laser technology has now established itself on top of other cutting methods. It not only offers exceptional precision cutting, but also ensures that the cutting zone stays cool and clean thanks to the continuous application of water. No other cutting technology is so gentle to the material. While conventional laser beams have a very limited working distance, the laser microjet can be guided in a cylindrical shape without any taper over a distance of up to 10 centimeters. It doesn't require any refocusing or distance control. Thanks to its versatile technology, the laser microjet is capable of machining a wide range of materials with an equally wide variety of thicknesses. Cutting even thick work pieces is a breeze. Uneven surfaces are also no problem. Fast 3D cutting and shaping is done with micron precision. When companies can't find a solution for their intricate cutting jobs, they turn to Sonova's proven laser systems. Various world-class industries have transitioned their micro-machining manufacturing to this wet laser technology for its high quality accuracy and flexible applications. Inspired by Swiss innovation and technology and dedicated to meeting the most exacting customer needs, Sonova is constantly on the quest for results. And so this was all about uh, advanced uh, manufacturing introduction. Okay. 
uh, advanced machining. Uh, so we have covered uh, alhamdulillah our topic of advanced machining now uh, comprising of ultrasonic machining uh, uh, advanced abrasive jet water jet machining uh, uh, abrasive water jet machining laser beam machining electron beam machining and last but not least the laser micro jet machining okay so mr hafiz anything uh when the laser yeah uh, is it a penetrate penetration uh, to or it has a sensor which is uh, the workpiece uh, let's say the workpiece is 5 mm uh -huh. and then, uh, is it the laser uh, penetrate beyond 5 mm uh -huh. or it has a sensor that limit the uh, laser uh, correct, correct. Not, not beyond the 5 mm if if it beyond the 5 mm it will cut the uh, yeah, yeah. workbench work bench or anything under under the workpiece yeah so basically if if we want to detect uh, whether uh, the laser has already penetrated or not then yes, we need uh, a sensor, a photo sensitive sensor, uh, which will immediately detect the laser beam once it is emitted. So it, it means that we need to put something below uh, the workbench. Very correct. correct. Oh, I see. OK, OK. So uh, they have a sensor that is not beyond uh, the laser, the laser not beyond. Uh, uh, can also. Laser. Usually, usually laser go beyond actually. So when, when we are doing conventional cutting using laser cutting, okay, what happen is that we put our we put our uh, sheet onto uh, triangular troughs actually. We put the sheet on this, okay, and then when the laser is cutting actually, uh, the material uh, the laser also sometimes strike this area also, and it basically damages the material. But we are not care about this area because we use this area to put our sample only. Oh, sorry, we can, I'm not showing something. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Where is this? So if you if you have a look at some of the laser cutting machine, let's say uh, this one and this one, okay. So you can see uh, there is a bed. There is a bed. Uh, yeah. Can you see these triangle triangle things? Yes. So so basically we put our sample on this whole uh, triangular trough triangular trough okay and we let the laser do the damage oh okay, okay so we don't care about the bottom part material the laser will damage it doesn't matter we will replace it but oh. this is only used to hold the material the function is this now the video the one in which they show the video this is another and new thing for us also because it is not usually employed usually this sensor is not employed for cutting technology this is something very new also in which now they have started to detect this is also another picture they have started to detect the laser beam and then stop it immediately once it uh, manages to go through the sample actually so you can see these uh, triangular triangle triangle things onto which the sample we put the uh, workpiece something okay. And you can see that the, there is deposited material onto the onto these uh, triangular uh, holding uh, workpiece holding uh, troughs. Actually, this is a bed, triangular trough bed. Actually, is it a magnetic magnetic field? Uh, the triangular 
dash. Uh, is it? Is it the magnetic field? No, 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 no. This is only it just to so so that we can put the sample on something actually. So what the hold the work piece? What kind to of hold the work piece? Same plan. On the blank, correct, correct. But it has a holding clamp. Correct. Okay, doctor. Understand. Understand. So, so because we we have a big sheet and we have to put this big sheet on something, so that we can uh, below it there is a gap, okay, and the workpiece can be removed. That is why we have these triangular things so that we can hold the workpiece. A better. We can have a better uh, design also, but currently in industry they are using this this type of bed to hold the workpiece. Something. We have this in UMP, I think, also. If I'm not mistaken. So this is for today's lecture. I will later on upload the video also. I think Mr. Uh, oh, fine. Uh, yeah, he is busy. So far he has a problem with line internet. Oh, okay. Kila he lives in Kilantan, he, right? Very special no, area. He, he just came by, uh, arrived at UMP last week. Oh, he already arrived in UMP. And uh, he is at he is he at UMP right now. Oh. But uh, they have problem at hostel, the Wi-Fi and internet connection there. <laughs> so they they have go they, he go to uh student uh, where uh, ah. the the Wi-Fi. Uh, PTMK, PTMK. Ah, you go to uh, PTMK, Wi Fi not connected, and, <laughs> and his room also not connected. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunate, unfortunate. I see, I see. So he could come to the lab also, no problem. I can arrange an internet for him. If he wants to come to the lab, also I can arrange, no problem. So. Uh, should be okay so okay so uh, i will see you guys uh, next week then mr office and so good luck and take care and see you happy ramadan fasting <laughs> yeah first uh, ramadan right yeah yeah sunday right sunday okay okay thank you assalamu alaikum